Children's Hour by Lillian Hellman, with Claire Holman, Buffy Davis, Miriam Margulies, and Margaret Robertson. Husband, I come. Now to that name my courage prove my title. I am fire and air. My other elements I give to baser life. So have you done? Come then and take the last warmth of my lips. Farewell, kind Charmian. Iris Long, farewell. I kiss you. Oh, yay, skip it. Evelyn, what are you doing? Uh, nothing, Mrs. Morton. Oh, you're certainly doing something. It's very unfortunate that you girls cannot sit quietly with your sewing and drink in the immortal words of the immortal bard. There never will be another. What, what is that thing? Who is sewing on that? It's a hat for church. You said I couldn't wear that handkerchief again. Oh, you can't wear that to church. Not when I chaperone the school. Might as well throw it away. <laughs> throw it away? If ever you had known the pangs of adversity as I have known them, well, do something else with it. Women must learn these tricks. Oh, continue, please. Uh, the stroke of death is as a lover's pinch, which hurts and is desired. Well, young lady, where have you been? You were supposed to read Anthony. Where have you been? I took a walk. Without asking my permission, you have been most discourteous. And courtesy is breeding, and breeding is most to be desired in a woman. May I have permission to write that down, Mrs. Morton? We wrote it down last week. Mary, I'm waiting for your explanation, or I shall most certainly report I you. I am sorry, Mrs. Morton. I went to get you these flowers. Oh. I thought you'd like them, and I didn't know it would take so long to pick them. Oh. Well, well. You were telling us last week how much you liked flowers, and I thought I would bring you some. Well, that was very sweet of you, Mary. Oh, I always like thoughtfulness, but you must not allow anything to interfere with your classes. <laughs> oh, oh, Anthony, nay, I will take thee too. What, should I stay? You may put that book away, Peggy. I am sure your family need never worry about your going on the stage. I don't want to go on the stage. I want to be a veterinarian. Hmm. Well, I certainly hope you won't read to the animals. <laughs> Good afternoon, oh, Good afternoon, Miss Ryan. Good afternoon, girls. Hello, Mary. Uh, uh, Peggy has been reading Cleopatra for oh. us. Oh, Peggy doesn't like Cleopatra. Well, I don't think she quite appreciates it, but... Well, I didn't either. Where did you get those flowers, Mary? She picked them for me. It made her a little late for class, but she heard me say I love flowers, and she went to get them for me. <laughs> Yes, the first wild flowers of the season. But not the very first. Are they married? I don't know. Well, where did you get them? Near Conway's cornfield, I think. It wasn't necessary to go so far. There was a bunch exactly like this in the garbage can this morning. Oh, oh. I can't believe it. What a nasty thing to do, garbage can flowers. <laughs> and I suppose you have just as fine an excuse for being an hour late to breakfast this morning and last week. Well, I haven't wanted to tell you these things before, but I... Oh, there's I the bell. Oh. Oh, Hush, children. Wait a minute, Mary. Mary, I have had the feeling, and I don't think I'm wrong, that the girls here were happy. That they like Miss Dolby and me. That they like the school. Miss Wright, I have to get my Latin book. I thought it was true until you came here a year ago. But I don't think you've been happy here, Mary. I've wanted to talk with you many times before, but I was hoping that you'd come to me. What is the matter, Mary? Nothing, Miss Wright. Well, there must be something wrong, or you wouldn't make up all these stories so often. Why, for example, do you find it necessary to lie to us so much? I'm not lying. I went out walking and I saw the flowers and they looked pretty and I didn't know it was so late. Stop it, Mary. I'm not interested in hearing that foolish story again. Mary, let's try to understand each other. If you feel that you have to take a walk or that you just can't come to class or that you'd like to go to the village by yourself, come and tell me. I'll try and understand. Uh, I don't say that I'll always agree that you should do exactly what you want to do. But I've had feelings like that too. Everybody has. 
Uh, and I won't be unreasonable about yours. I got the flowers near Conway's cornfield. Oh, well. Well. There doesn't seem to be any other way with you. You'll have to be punished. Take your recreation periods alone for the next two weeks. No horseback riding and no hockey. Don't leave the school grounds for any reason whatsoever. Is that clear? Saturday, too? Yes. You said I could go to the boat race. I'm sorry, but you can't go. I'll tell my grandmother. I'll tell her how everybody treats me here and the way I get punished for every little thing I do. I'll tell her. Well, I'd slap her hands. Go upstairs, Mary. I don't feel well. Go upstairs, Mary. Oh, I've got a pain. Uh, I've had it all morning. It hurts right here. Oh, oh really, it does. Ask Miss Dover oh. to give you some hot water and bicarbonate of soda. Oh, it's a bad pain. I've never had it before. Go upstairs, Mary. Oh, my heart. It's my heart. It's stopping or something. I can't breathe. Oh. Ask Martha to phone Joe. Oh, do you think... Uh, a heart trouble is very serious in a child. Where is she? In there. Mortar's with her. Anything really wrong with her? <laughs> no. But no, we ought to do something. How about having a talk with Mrs. Tilford? You want to do it? No. I hate to do it. She's been so nice to us. How about asking Joe to say something to her? She'd listen to him. We don't get anywhere with Mary, and we might as well admit it. Uh, all right. Uh, we'll ask Joe what he thinks. Be nice if she didn't come back next term. And be very nice if our other nuisance didn't come back either. <laughs> My aunt, the actress? <laughs> What's she been up to now? The usual foolishness. <laughs> Last night at dinner, she gave a full hour's lecture on the benefits of playing Cleopatra <laughs> during a hurricane. That happened, she said, oh. in Butte, Montana. <laughs> On the night that a man in a box fell in love with her, he threw her a string of pearls. Yeah, I know the hurricane story. <laughs> and sometimes the pearls are flowers. <laughs> and sometimes the man in the box is Duke. And once, he was a king. <laughs> I know all the stories. Oh, couldn't we get rid of her soon, Martha? I, I don't want to make it hard on you, but she really ought not to be here. I know. We, we can scrape up enough money to send her away. Let's do it. You've been very patient about it. And I'll see to it that she goes soon. Mm -hmm. Oh, did you get Joe himself on the phone? He was already on his way. Isn't he always on his way over here? Well, I am going to marry him. I'm glad he wants to see me. You haven't talked about marriage for a long time. I, I mean, have you and Joe decided on... Yes. <laughs> we'll get married as soon as the term is over. We'll be out of debt by then, and the school will be paying for itself. And Joe's found a house. We'll all go and look at it tomorrow. So soon? Then we won't be taking our vacation together? Of course we will. The three of us. I've taken it for granted, I guess, th that we were going to the lake, like we always do, just you and I. And now there'll be three of us. That'll be fun, too. We really are going to leave, aren't you? I'm not going to leave. And you know it. Why do you say things like that? We agreed a long time ago that my marriage wasn't going to make any difference to the school. But it will. You know it will. It can't help it. That's nonsense. Joe doesn't want me to give up here. I don't understand you. It's been so damn hard building this thing up. And now when we're getting on our feet, you're all ready to let it go to hell. My marriage is not going to interfere with my work here. You're, you're making something out of nothing. It's going to be hard going on alone afterwards. You haven't listened to a word I've said. You are not going on alone. You talk as if you'd never taken the marriage very seriously. I don't mean that, but it... Hello, darling. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Martha. Hello, Joe. We try to get you on the phone. Come and look at your little cousin. Oh, I don't like to look at her much. What's the matter now? Hey, I stopped at Bernie's on my way over. Helped him with the new bull. It's easier to deliver a baby. Come and see her. She says she has a pain in her heart. Oh, my little Mary pops up in every day's dispatch. Go and see her. Heart attacks are nothing to play with. 
You never played with one in my life. We won't need you anymore. That'll be all, Mrs. Mortar. I was asked to leave the room. It seems I'm not wanted in the room during the examination. It was a deliberate snub. I don't think so. Isn't it natural that the child should have me with her? Isn't it natural that an older woman should be present at a physical examination? Oh, very well. If you are so thick-skinned that you don't, you don't resent these what things. What are you talking about? Why in the name of heaven should you be with her? I have been to good doctors in my better days. I say it's customary to have an older woman present. Wait, tell that to Joe. Maybe he'll give you a job as duenna for his office. It was I who saved Delia Lampert's life the time she had that heart attack in <sighs> Buffalo, right on the stage without <sighs> losing a line. Poor Delia. She married Robert Lafon in London after he found there was no soap with me. Not nine months later, he left her and ran away with Eva Clune. Delia's heart attack came afterwards. Yes, if you've seen one heart attack, you've seen them all. So you don't resent your aunt being snubbed and humiliated? Oh, Aunt Lily. Karen is rude to me, and you know it. I know that she is very kind to you, and what's even harder, very patient. Patient with me? Where could you have gotten a woman of my reputation to give these children voice lessons, elocution lessons? Patient with me? Here, I've donated my services. You are being paid. That small thing. I used to earn twice that for one performance. No wonder the theater's in trouble. You've never been happy here, Aunt Lily. Oh, satisfied enough, I guess, for a poor relation. You don't like the school or the farm. I told you in the beginning you shouldn't have bought a place like this. Burying yourself on a farm. Oh, meeting no men. You'll regret it. Aunt Lily, you've talked about London for a long time. Would you like to go over? Oh, it's been 20 years. I shall never live to see it again. You can go any time you like. We can spare the money now, and it will do you a lot of good. You pick out the boat, and I'll get the passage. And if you live sensibly, I ought to be able to let you have enough to get along on. So you want me to leave? Aunt Lily, you've wanted to go ever since I can remember. You're turning me out? At my age? Nice, grateful girl you are. Oh, how can anybody deal with you? You're going where you want to go, and we'll be better off alone. Oh, that suits everybody. You complain about the farm, you complain about the school, you complain about Karen, and now you have what you want. You're still looking for something to complain about. Please do not raise your voice. Oh, be glad I don't do worse. I'm not going to England. Oh. I refuse to let you ship me off to any place you like. I shall go back to the stage. I'll write to my agents tomorrow, and just as soon as they have something for me, I'll be out of here. The truth is, I'd like you to leave soon. We cannot live together, and it doesn't make any difference whose fault it is. You wish me to go tonight? Oh, stop it, Aunt Lily. Go as soon as you've found a place you like. <laughs> I should have known by this time that the wise thing is to stay out of your way when he's in the house. What are you talking about now? You always take your spite out on me. Spite? Oh, don't let's have any more of this today. I'm tired. I've been working since six o'clock this morning. Any day that he's in the house is a bad day. When who is in the house? Oh, don't think you're fooling me, young lady. I wasn't born yesterday. I don't know what you're talking about. I know what I know. Every time that man comes into the house, you are in a bad humor. You're jealous. That's what it is. I'm very fond of Joe, and you know it. You'd better get a bow of your own. That's what you need. Every woman, no matter what she says, is jealous when another woman gets a husband. You just better set your cap for what comes along. Aunt Lily, please stop that talk. I've had too much of it for too many years. I can't take any more. You've always had a jealous and possessive nature, oh. even as a child. If you had a friend, you always got mad if she liked anybody else. That's what's happening now. And it's unnatural. Just as unnatural as it can be. I say you need a man of your own. The and sooner you get out of here, the better. You are making me sick, and I won't stand for you any longer. I want you to leave, and now... Are you doing outside the door? 
We were going upstairs, Miss Delta. We came down to see how Mary was. And you stopped long enough to see how we were? Were you deliberately listening? We didn't mean to. We just heard voices and we couldn't help. Eavesdropping is something ladies just don't do. Go upstairs now. We'll talk about this later. Yes, Miss You mean to say you're not going to do anything about that? You shouldn't be around children. What exactly does that mean? This is their home. And things shouldn't be said in it that they can't hear. Oh. When you're at your best, you're not for tender ears. Oh, so now it's my fault, is it? You better start looking at yourself and not bother so much with me. Good day, Joseph. What's the matter with the Duchess? Rehearsing an exit in case she finds the right play. <laughs> what about Mary? Nothing. I thought so. <laughs> I guess she'd heard somewhere that fainting scares people. But it's such a silly thing to do. She knew we'd have you in. We're reaching the end of our rope with her. This kind of thing can't go on. Aren't you taking it too seriously? No, I guess I am. But I do think somebody ought to talk to Mrs. Tilford about her. <laughs> Now, you wouldn't be meaning me now, would you? Well, she is your aunt. And Karen and I were talking about it. Uh, I'm marrying and, uh, Karen, but I'm not going to write Mary Tilford into the contract. Uh, incidentally, did Karen tell you we're thinking of the old king house that's up for sale? She told me. Incidentally. What's the matter, Martha? Nothing. Yes, there is. Yeah. Look here, I, I'm very fond of you, and I, I always thought you liked me. Now, don't worry about the school. She'll still be with you. Damn here. you! You leave me alone. Stop consoling me or patronizing me or feeling sorry for me or whatever you're doing. Leave me alone! Oh, Joe, please. I'm sorry. I don't know what's got into me. I'm turning into a nasty, bitter... You're not turning into anything except the nice woman you are. Well... The angel child is now looking very hurt and putting her clothes back on. <laughs> her influence is abroad even while she's unconscious. Her roommates were listening at the door while Aunt Lily and I were yelling at each other. Oh, I'll have to move those girls away from one another. Away from Mary. That's my class. I'll send Peggy and Evelyn down. Better put them in another room. Yes, I will. Mary? Mary? Well, Mary, how does it feel to be back from the grave? Meet any interesting people? My heart hurts. Oh, you like that story, don't you? It's my heart and it hurts. I want to see my grandmother. I want to come in, girls. I want to talk to you. We're awfully sorry, really. We just didn't mean to. Oh, I'm sorry, too, Peggy. You and Evelyn never used to do things like this. We'll have to separate you three. Oh, oh, Miss Wright, we've been together almost a year. It was evidently too long. Peggy, you will move into Lois's room, and uh, Lois will move in with Evelyn. Oh. Mary will go in with Rosalie. Rosalie hates me. That is a silly thing to say. I can't imagine Rosalie hating anyone. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all because I had a pain. <laughs> if anyone else was sick, they'd be put to bed and petted. You're always mean to me. I get blamed and punished for everything. <laughs> I do, Cousin Joe, all the time for everything. Now, you've been unpleasant enough to Miss Wright. <laughs> Come over to the office one day. I'll show you how to do a good thing. <laughs> She's not going to hurt herself crying. You take good care of yourself. I'll walk to the car with you. Oh, good. Girls... Go up now and move your things. <laughs> Tell Lois to get her stuff ready. <laughs> knocked it over. Oh, yeah, she's gonna believe that oh, one. Stop worrying about it. I'll get out of it. Did you really have a pain? I fainted, didn't I? I wish I oh. could faint. Is it hard? 
I've never even worn glasses or braces, and I've got my own tonsils. A lot it'll get you to faint. Well, what did Miss Wright do to you when the class left? Told me I couldn't go to the boat races. Oh, oh gosh. We came down to see what was happening to you, <gasps> but the doors were closed, and we could hear Miss Doby and Mortar having an awful row. What were they saying? What was Sue saying? Doby and Mortar, silly. Just talking, I guess. Fighting. About what? Well, they were talking about Mortar going away to England. You know, Evelyn, it really wasn't very nice to have listened, and I think maybe it's worse to tell. Oh, you do, do you? You just don't tell me and see what happens. <laughs> Mortar got awful sore at that and said that they just wanted to get rid of her. And then they started talking about Dr. Cardiff. What about him? They're going to be married, the two of them. Everybody knows that. But everybody doesn't know that Miss Doby doesn't want them to get married. How do you like that? <gasps> I have a class soon. If you're going to move your hand... Close that door, you idiot. What do you want? I'm trying to tell you. If you're going to move your things, not that I want you in with me, the <laughs> devil knows, you'd better start right now. Miss Wright's coming in a minute. Who cares if she is? Well, I'm just telling you for your own good. The devil knows. We're coming. No. Let Rosalie move our things. And who was your French maid yesterday, Mary Tilford? And who will wait upon you in the insane asylum? Well, you'll do for today. Now go on, Rosalie, and fix our things. You crazy? And the next time we go into town, I'll let you wear my gold beads and pearl pin. You'll like that, won't you, Rosalie? I don't know what you're talking about. The devil knows. You just run along now and remind me the next time to lend you, lend you my beads and pins. All right, I'll do it. But just because i got a good disposition. But don't think you're going to boss me around, Mary Tilford. <laughs> no, indeed. <laughs> and get the things done neatly, Rosalie. Don't muss my white gloves. <laughs> My tennis shoes need cleaning. <laughs> what do you think of that? What made her so agreeable? Oh, a little secret we got. Uh, go on now, Peggy. What else did she say? Well, Mortar said that Dobie was jealous of them and that she was like that when she was a little girl and that she better get herself a bow of her own because it was unnatural and that she never wanted anybody to like Miss Wright and that was unnatural. Mm. Boy, did Miss Doby get sore at that. And then we didn't hear her anymore. Peggy dropped some books. What did she mean, Doby was jealous? What's unnatural? On for not, not natural. It's funny because everybody gets married. A lot of people don't. They're too ugly. Hmm. <gasps> oh, my God. Rosalie will find that copy of Mademoiselle de Maupin. Oh, she'll blab like the dickens. Ah, okay. uh, she won't say a word. Who gets the book when we move? You can have it. Oh, that's what I was doing this morning, finishing it. There's one part one of part. it. What is it? Wait until you read it. <laughs> We'd better get upstairs. I'm not going. Oh, Rosalie isn't so bad. Well, what are you going to do about the kitten? I don't care about Rosalie, and I don't care about the kitten. I'm not going to be here. Oh, you can't do that. Oh, can't I? You just watch. You're just going to walk out just like that? What are you going to tell your grandmother? Oh, who cares? I'll think of something to tell her. I can always do it better on the spur of the moment. She'll send you right back. You let me worry about that. Grandma's very fond of me. On account my father was her favorite son. My father killed himself, but Grandma won't admit it. I can manage her all right. I don't think you ought to go, really, Mary. It's just going to make an awful lot of trouble. Now listen, you two got to help. They won't miss me before dinner if you make Rosalie shut the door and keep it shut. Now I'll go through the field to French's and then I can get the bus to Homestead. Well, how are you going to get to the streetcar? Taxi, uh, How are you going to get out of here in the first place? I'm going to walk out. I know where they keep the front door. Oh, gee, I wouldn't have the nerve. Of course you wouldn't. You'd let them do anything they want. Do you want to catch your death of cold at your age? Do you have to hurry so? Oh, Grandma! Hey, what are you doing home? <laughs> Never mind, dear. Now stop crying and tell me what is the matter. You didn't come to visit me all last week. I couldn't, dear. 
But I was coming tomorrow. Oh, I missed you so. I was awful homesick. She only came home for Wednesday night fudge cake. But how did you get here? Did Miss Karen drive you over? I, I, I walked most of the way, and then a lady gave me a ride. Did she have to walk through the woods in her very best coat? Mary, do you mean you left without permission? I, I ran away. They didn't know. There was a very bad thing to do, and they'll be worried. Agatha, phone Miss Wright and tell her Mary is here. Yes. John will drive her back before dinner. Oh, no, Grandma, don't do that. Please don't do that. Please let me stay. But, darling, you can't leave school any time you please. Oh, please, Grandma, don't send me back right away. You don't know how they'll punish me. I don't think they'll be that angry. Now, come, you're acting like a foolish little girl. Oh, Grandma! Never mind, Tony, now, Agatha. Stop crying, Mary. Oh, it's so nice here, Grandma. I'm glad you like being home with me, but at your age, you can hardly... What made you talk that way about Miss Wright and Miss Doby? You can't say such things about people, Mary. You know very well they wouldn't hurt you for anything. Oh, but they would. They... I... I fainted today. Fainted? Yes, I did. My heart. I had a pain in my heart. And when I fainted right in class, they called Cousin Joe, and he said I didn't. Oh, well, if Joseph said it wasn't serious, it wasn't. But I did have a pain in my heart. Honest. Have you still got it? Well, I guess I haven't got it much anymore. But I feel a little weak. It's perfectly possible you had a pain. But it's not nice to frighten people by pretending to be more sick than you are. Well, I didn't want to be sick, but I'm always getting punished for everything. You mustn't imagine things like that, child, or you'll grow up to be a very unhappy woman. I'm not going to scold you any more for coming home this time. I suppose I should. Now run along upstairs and wash your face and change your dress, and after dinner, John will drive you back. Run along. I can stay for dinner? Yes. Maybe I could stay till the first of the week. Saturday's your birthday, and I could be here with you. We won't celebrate my birthday, dear. We'll wait for yours. You go back to school after dinner. But how much do you love me? As much as all the words in all the books in all the world. Remember when I was little and used to tell me that right before I went to sleep? And it was a rule. Nobody could say another single word after you finished. You used to say, world. And then I had to shut my eyes tight. I miss you an awful lot, Grandma. And I miss you. But I'm afraid my Latin is rusty. You'll do better in school. But, but couldn't I stay out the rest of this term? After the summer, maybe I won't mind it so much. I'll study hard, honest, by myself. Now, don't be silly, Mary. Back you go tonight. Let's not have any more talk about it now, and let's have no more running away from school. Ever. Then I really have to go back there tonight? Of course you do. You don't love me. You don't care whether they kill me or not. Mary. You don't, you don't. You don't care what happens to me. I, I do care that you're talking this way. <laughs> I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. Forgive me. What made you talk like that? I'm scared, Grandma. I'm scared. Oh, they'll do dreadful things to me. I've never heard such nonsense. What have they ever done to you that is so terrible? A lot of things. All the time. Miss Wright says I can't go to the boat races, and, and it's... It's after what happened today. What was it, then? I can't tell you. Why? Because you're just going to take their part. Very well. I run upstairs and get ready for dinner. It was... It was all about Miss Toby and Mrs. Mortar. They were talking awful things, and Peggy and Evelyn heard them, and Miss Toby found out, and then they made us move our rooms. What does that to do with you? They have secrets, 
And they're afraid I'll find out and tell you. There's nothing wrong with people having secrets. But they've got funny ones. Peggy and Evelyn heard Mrs. Mortar telling Miss Dobie that she was jealous of Miss Wright marrying Cousin Joe. You shouldn't repeat things like that. It means nothing. And... She said it was unnatural for a girl to feel that way. That's what she said, Grandma. She said there was something funny about it and that Miss Stoby had always been like that, even when she was a little girl, and that it was unnatural. Stop using that silly word, Mary. But that's the word she kept using, Grandma. And then Miss Stoby got mad and told Mrs. Mortar she'd have to get out of the house. That was probably not the reason at all. Oh, I bet it was, because honestly, Miss Stoby does get cranky and mean every time Cousin Joe comes. And today I heard her say to him, Tam you, and then she said she was just a jealous fool and, and, and he was to leave her alone. You have picked up some very fine words, haven't you, Mary? Well, that's just what she said, Grandma. And one time, Miss Stoby was crying in Miss Wright's room, and Miss Wright was trying to stop her. And she said that, all right, maybe she wouldn't get married right away. How do you know all this? But we couldn't help hearing because they... I mean, Miss Dobie was talking awful loud, and their room is right next to ours. Whose room? Oh, Miss Wright's room, I mean. And, and you can just ask Peggy and Evelyn whether we didn't hear. And they punish me all the time for... For eavesdropping, I should think. Well, now, I, I think we've had enough gossip. Dinner's almost ready. I've heard other things, too. You've always said I should tell you things that worried me. Plenty of things I've heard worry me, Grandma. What things? Bad things. Well, what were they? I can't tell you. Mary, you're annoying me very much. If you have anything to say, then say it and stop acting silly. I mean, I can't say it out loud. There couldn't possibly be anything you couldn't say out loud. Now, either tell me what's worrying you or be still. Well, a lot of things I don't understand. But it's awful. And sometimes they fight, and then they make up again. And there are funny noises, and we get scared. Noises. And we've seen things, too. Funny things. I, I tell you, but i got to whisper it. Why must you whisper it? I don't know. i just got to. What are you saying? I don't believe you know what you're saying, Mary. Are you telling me the truth? Honest, honest. You just ask Peggy and Evelyn, and, and, and they know too. Just get them here and ask them. Oh, Grandma, don't make me go back to that awful place. What? Don't make me go back to that place. I just couldn't stand it anymore. Really, Grandma, I'm so unhappy there. If only I could stay out the rest of the term, why then... Be still a minute. Mary, have you told me the truth? Swear on the grave of my father. Please don't send me back. No. You won't have to go back. <gasps> Honest? Oh. oh, you're the nicest, loveliest grandma in all the world. You, you're not mad at me? I'm not mad at you. Now go upstairs. Is Miss... Is Miss Wright in? Uh, never mind, never mind. Dr. Cardin, please. Mrs. Tilford. Joseph. Joseph. Can you come to see me right away? Yes, I'm perfectly well... I can't tell you over the phone. Can you come sooner? Very well, Joseph. Make it as soon as you can. And see, 
to it that she doesn't get the good blankets all dirty. And let her wear your green pajamas. Who? Who? Don't you ever keep your ears open. Rosalie Wells is coming over to spend the night with you. You mean she's going to sleep here? You've heard me. What for? Do I know all the crazy things that are happening around here? Your grandmother phoned Mrs. Wells all the way to New York, $5.85 thrown out, and Mrs. Wells wanted to know if Rosalie could stay here until tomorrow. Oh. Couldn't Evelyn Munn come instead? Sure. We'll have the whole town over to entertain you. I won't let Rosalie Wells wear my new pajamas. Don't tell me what you won't do. You'll act like a lady for once in your life. Come on in, Rosalie. Just go on in and make yourself at home. Have you had your dinner? Mm-hmm. Yes, ma'am. Take off your pretty coat. Uh, have you had your bath? Yes, ma'am. This morning. Well, you better have another one. Uh. So it's you. You're a goose. Well, who likes to hear funny noises at night? You could have been a werewolf. What would a werewolf do with you? Just what he'd do with anybody else. (laughs) Isn't it funny about school? What's funny about it? Don't act like you can come home every night. Maybe I can from now on. Maybe I'm never going back. Am I going back? I don't want to stay home. What do you give to know? Nothing. You don't know anyway. I know what I heard. And I know Grandma phoned your mother in New York $5.85 to come and get you right away. Peggy and Helen and Evelyn and Lois went home tonight, too. Do you think someone's got secret measles or something? No. Do you know what it is? How'd you find out? You're always pretending to know everything. You're just faking. Never mind, don't bother telling me. I think curiosity is very unladylike anyhow. I have no concern with your silly secrets. None at all. Mm -hmm. What did you say? I didn't say a thing. Oh. (laughs) But now, suppose I told you that I just may have said that you were in on it. In on what? The secret. Suppose I told you that I may have said that you told me about it. I didn't tell you about anything. Mm -hmm. Did you tell your grandmother such a thing? Maybe. Well, I'm going right up to your grandmother and tell her I didn't tell you anything, whatever it is. You're just trying to get me into trouble like always, and I'm not going to let you. Wait a minute, I'll come with you. What for? I want to tell her about Helen Burton's bracelet. What about it? Just that you stole it. Shut up. I didn't do any such thing. Yes, you did. You made it up. You're always making things up. You can't call me a liar, Rosie Wells. That's a kind of dare, and I won't take a dare. I guess I'll go tell Grandma anyway. Then she can call the police, and they'll come for you, and you'll get tried in court. Ow! And you go to one of those prisons, and you'll get older and older. And when you're good and old, they'll let you out. But your mother and father will be dead by then, and you won't have any place to go, and you'll beg on the street. I didn't steal anything. I borrowed the bracelet and was going to put it back as soon as I'd worn it to the movies. I never meant to keep it. Nobody will believe that, least of all the police. You're just a common ordinary thing. Stop that bawling. You'll have the whole house down here in a minute. You won't tell. Say you won't tell. Am I a liar? No. Then say, I apologize on my hands and knees. I apologize on my hands and knees. Say, from now on, I, Rosalie Wells, am the vassal of Mary Tilford and will do and say whatever she tells me under the solemn oath of a knight. I won't say that. That's the worst kind of oath there is. Mary, please don't. Will you swear it? But then you could tell me to do anything. Say it quick. (gasps) From now on, I, Rosalie Wells, am the vassal of Mary Tilford and will do and say whatever she tells me under the solemn oath of a knight. Don't forget that. Good evening, Rosalie. You're looking very well. Good evening, Mrs. Tilford. She's getting fatter every day. Then it's very becoming. That must be Joseph. Mary, take Rosalie into the library. There's some fruit and milk on the table. 
Be sure you're both fast asleep by half past ten. Go on, Rosalie. Oh. Grandma. Yes. Grandma, cousin Joe will say I've, I've got to go back. He'll say I really wasn't. <gasps> Hello, Amelia. Hello, Joseph. How are you? Merry home. Whiskey? Yeah, please. Uh, let me do that. Headaches again? No. Well, what's the matter with your hands? Nothing. How have you been, Joseph? Did I take you away from a patient? Amelia, you didn't bring me here to talk about the hospital. What's the matter with you? I have something to tell you. Well, out with it. it it's a very hard thing to say, Joseph. Well, you're in trouble, Amelia? Yes. We're all in trouble, bad trouble. We? Well, me, you mean? <laughs> well, nothing's the matter with me. When did you last see Karen? Today. This afternoon. Oh. Not since seven o'clock. What's happened since seven o'clock? Joseph. You've been engaged to Karen for a long time. Are your plans any more definite than they were a year ago? You can buy the wedding present. <laughs> and we'll be married in this room, huh? The way you and I planned it long before we knew the girl. Now, it's not like you to waste your time. Or mine. What did you call me here for? You must not marry, Karen. <laughs> Why must I not marry Karen? What are you talking about? Why must I not marry Karen? Because there's something wrong with Karen. Something horrible. And there's something very wrong with you for thinking you can talk this way to me. I know what I'm talking about. Who is that? I won't have her here. And you don't want to have me either. Karen. What happened, Joe? Is it a joke, Joe? Well, Mrs. Tilford, we've come to find out what you were doing. What is it? I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. What did she do it for? What are you talking about? What do you I, mean? You shouldn't have come but here. What is all this? What's happened? I tried to reach you. I tried and tried. Uh, hasn't she told you? No, nobody's told me anything. I haven't heard anything but wild talk. What, what, what is it, Karen? <sighs> Martha, what's happened? An insane asylum has been let loose. How do we know what's happened? Well, what was it? We didn't know what it was. Nobody would talk to us. And nobody would tell us what, anything. Stop it! Tell me what's happened. See if you can make any sense out of it. At dinner time, Mrs. Munn's chauffeur arrived and said that Evelyn must be sent home right away. At half past seven, Mrs. Burton came to tell us that she wanted Helen's things packed immediately and that she'd wait outside because she didn't want to enter a place like ours. Why? Five minutes later, the Wells butler came for Rosalie. Why? It was a madhouse. People rushing in and out, the children being pushed into cars, Karen and I begging people to tell us, nobody answering us. Mrs. Rogers finally told us... <sighs> what? That... That Martha and I have been have been lovers. Mrs. Tilford told them. Did you tell them that? Yes. Are you sick? Are you a sick woman? You know I'm not sick. Then what did you do it for? Because it's true. You think it's true, then? You crazy, crazy, crazy old woman. You mean you did say it? You knew what you were saying? You? Yes, I knew what I was saying. I don't think you should have come here. You damn vicious! I shall not call you names, and I will not allow you to call me names. You should not have come here. I don't trust myself to talk about it with you now or ever. What's she mean? What, what is she trying to do to us? What did she do it for? Were we supposed to lie down and smile while you took up a gun and looked around for people to kill? This can't do any of us any good, Mr. Listen, Lee. listen. You're not playing with paper dolls. We're human beings, see? We're people. It's our lives you're playing with. Can you understand that? I can understand that, and I understand a lot more. You've been playing with a lot of children's lives, and that's why I stopped you. 
I know how serious this is for you. How serious it is for all of us. I don't think you do know. I don't think so. I wanted to avoid this meeting because it can't do any good. You came here to find out if I had made the charge. You found out. Let's end it there. I don't want you in this house. I'm sorry this had to be done to you, Joseph. Oh, don't talk to me like that, Amelia. Please. Very well. There's nothing I mean to do. Nothing I want to do. There's nothing anybody can do. You have done a terrible thing. I have done what I had to do. But they are may possibly be their own business. It becomes a great deal more than that when children are concerned in it. Children... It's not true. Not a word of it is true. Can't you understand that? There won't be any punishment for either of you. But there mustn't be any punishment for me either. And that is what this meeting is. Are you willing to stand by everything you said tonight? Yes. All right. That's fine. But don't get the idea we'll let you whisper this lie. You made it, and you'll come out with it. Shriek it to your town of Lancet. We'll make you shriek it, and we'll make you do it in a courtroom. Tomorrow, Mrs. Tilford, you will have a libel suit on your hands. Miss Dobie, don't do that. It's your turn to be frightened. It is you I am thinking of. I am frightened for you. It was wrong of you to brazen it out here tonight. It would be criminally foolish of you to brazen it out in public. That can bring nothing but pain. I am an old woman, Miss Dobie, and I have seen too many people act in pride and anger. In the end, they punish themselves. We'll take our own way. So you took a child's word for it. it that's what she did. That is really where you got it. Why, why, she is a child. She's not a child. Oh, my God, it all fits so well now. That girl has hated us for a long time. We never knew why. We never could find out. For you to say that, Miss Wright. I'm telling you the truth. We should have told it to you long ago. Where is she? You cannot see her. Where is she? I won't have that, Joseph. I'm going to talk to her. I won't have her go through that again. Karen, Martha, you came here demanding explanations. It was I who should have asked them from you. I've told you I didn't mean you any harm. I still don't. You claim that it isn't true. It may be natural that you should say that. But I know that it is true. All I wanted was to get those children away. That has been done. There will be nothing else. And there won't be any talk about it or about you. I'll see to that. You have been in my house long enough. Get out. Let's go home. I want to see Mary. I'm going to see her. And you know I'm not going to leave this house until I do. <sighs> I've been your friend. You owe me something. Mary! Come here. Cousin Joe? Don't be afraid, Mary. Now, Mary? Everybody lies all the time. I've lied myself for a lot of different reasons, but there was never a time when, if I'd been given a second chance, I wouldn't have taken back the lie and told the truth. I'm telling you this because I'm about to ask you a question. Now, before you answer the question, I want to tell you that if you've lied... If you've made a mistake, you must take this chance to say so. Now, you won't be punished for it. Do you get all that? Yes, Cousin Joe. All right. Now, were you telling your grandmother the truth this afternoon? The exact truth about Miss Wright and Miss Dobie? Oh, yes. Oh. All right, Mary. That was your chance. You passed it up. Now, let's find out things. She's told you, Joseph, that will be all. No, I... no. Will you answer some more questions, Mary? Yes, 
Cousin Joe. Stop that sick, sweet tone of voice. Why don't you like Miss Doby and Miss Wright? Oh, I do like them. They just don't like me. <laughs> they never have liked me. Well, how do you know? They're always picking on me. No matter what happens, it's always me. Well, why do you think they do that? Because... Because they're... Because they... Grandma, I... It's all right, all right, all right. Did you get punished today? Yes. And it was just because Peggy and Evelyn heard them, and so they took it out on me. That's a lie. Um, heard what, Mary? Mrs. Mortar told Miss Doby that there was something funny about her. She said that she had a funny feeling about Miss Wright, and Mrs. Mortar said that it was unnatural. That was why we got punished, just because... That was not the reason they got punished. My aunt is a stupid woman. What she said was unpleasant. It was said to annoy me. It meant nothing more than that. And, Cousin Joe, she said that every time you came to the school, Miss Doby got jealous <gasps> and that she didn't want you to get married. She said that, too. The, this child is taking little things, little family things, and making them have meanings that... <sighs> Mary... Where did you learn so much in so little time? What do you think Mrs. Mortar meant by all that talk, Mary? Stop it, Joseph. I don't know. But it was always kind of funny. And she always said things like that. And all the girls would talk about it when Miss Doby went and visited <sighs> Miss Wright late at night. And we work at night. And sometimes we go to the movies at night. And sometimes we read at night. And sometimes we drink tea at night. <laughs> We are guilty of all those things, Mrs. Tilford. There were always funny sounds. And we'd stay awake and listen because we couldn't help hearing. And I'd get frightened because the sounds Be were Be like... still! No! No! You don't want her still now. The sounds were like what? Grandma, Leave I... the child alone. It doesn't need a name. Stop. Now go on, Mary. I don't know. They were just sounds. Yeah, but what did you think they were? I mean, why did they frighten you? I don't know. <sighs> she doesn't know. But I saw things, too. One night, there was so much noise, I thought somebody was sick or something, and I looked through the keyhole, and they were kissing and oh. saying things. And then I got scared because it was different, sort of. That child, that child is sick! Ask her again how she could see us. How could you see Miss Doby and Miss Wright? I... I... Tell him what you whispered to me. It was at night, and I was leaning down by the keyhole. There's no keyhole on my door! What? There is no keyhole on my door. It wasn't her room, Grandma. It was the other room, I guess. Oh. It was Miss Doby's room. I saw them through the keyhole in Miss Doby's room. Well, how did you know anybody was in Miss Doby's room? I told you, I told you, because we heard them. Everybody heard I them. I share a room with my aunt. It is on the first floor at the back of the house. Mary's room is at the front of the house at the other end. It is impossible to hear anything from there. Tell her to come and see for herself. What is this, Mary? Why did you say you saw through a keyhole? Can you hear from your room? <laughs> Everybody's yelling at me. I don't know what I'm saying with everybody mixing me all up. I did see it. I did see it. What did you see? Where did you see it? I want the truth now, the truth, whatever it is. We can go home. We're finished here. It's an ugly house. Stop that crying, Mary. Stand up. I want the truth. What is the truth?
Joseph, please, wait a minute. <laughs> Rosalie! Amelia, you deserve whatever you get. I don't know. I don't know anymore. Maybe it's what I do deserve. Mrs. Tilford? I'm sorry to keep you up so late, Rosalie. You must be tired. Mary says there's been a lot of talk in school lately about Miss Wright and Miss Toby. Is that true? Uh, I don't know what you mean. Th that things have been said among you girls. What things? I, I never... What I... was the talk about, Rosalie? Don't be frightened. Oh, well, I don't know what she means, Miss Wright. Rosalie, Mary has told her grandmother that certain things at school have been uh, pu puzzling you girls. Oh. You particularly. A lot of things puzzle me. I guess I'm not very good at algebra, and Helen helps me sometimes. No, that... it's, that's not what she meant. She says that you told her you saw certain... certain acts between Miss Dobie and myself. She says that once when the door was open, you saw us kissing <sighs> each other in a way that women don't kiss one another. Oh, Miss Wright, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. I never said such a thing. That's true, my dear. I never saw any such thing. Mary always makes things up about me and everybody else. Everybody in school knows that. I never said any such thing ever. Why, I never even could have thought of... Yes, you did, Rosalie. Uh, you're just... It was the day Helen's bracelet was stolen and nobody oh. knew who did it. And Helen said if her mother found out, she'd have the thief put in jail right away. There's nothing to cry about. You must help us by telling the truth. Why, what's the matter, Rosalie? Grandma, there's something I, I have to tell you. Yes, but I... yes, I did see it. I told Mary. What Mary said was right. I said it, I said it, I said it. in here? Yes. What time is it? I don't know. What's the difference? None. I was hoping it was time for my bath. Take it early today. Oh, I couldn't do that. I look forward all day to that bath. Makes me feel important to know there's one thing I've got to do. Joe's late today. What time is it? We've been sitting here for eight days asking each other the time. It's been eight days since we've been out of this house. Well, we'll have to get off these chairs sooner or later. In a couple of months, they'll need dusting. What'll we do when we get off? Dust the chairs? It's awful. Let's not talk about it. Let's eat a good dinner tonight. What about eggs for dinner? All right. I'll make some potatoes with onions, the way you used to like it's them. a week ago, Thursday. It never seemed real until the last day. Although I guessed it before that. Didn't you? It seems real enough now, all right. Let's go out. Where to? Joe says we've got to go out. He says that all the people who don't think it's true will begin to wonder if we keep hiding this way. If it makes you feel better to think there are such people, go ahead. He says we must go into town and go shopping and... There aren't three stores in Lancet that would sell us anything. Well, hasn't he heard about the ladies' clubs and their meetings and their circulars and their visits and the... Don't tell him. I won't. Anyhow, you'll be getting married soon. Everything will be all right then. Yes. What is it? Nothing. It'll be a good day. And a happy one for me. Maybe the happiest one of my life. What's the matter? Nothing, Martha. There mustn't be anything wrong between you and Joe. Never. Never. Nothing's wrong. 
Oh, there's Joe now. Can I come in? I'm very glad to see you both. How is everything? Everything's fine. How are you? Oh, a little tired, a long train trip. Of course. Is there something I can get you? Why, well, you know, I would, I would like a, a, a cup of tea, but, but don't you bother. Don't bother at all. China tea, English tea, perhaps a little whiskey and soda. Oh, Mama. Well, I, I think I'll take Where a... the hell have you been? I've been on tour. You know that. Mostly one night stands, although we played a ghastly week in Detroit, as ugly as city. Oh, but the whole theater has changed. They will not accept a serious play on the road. No question of it. Musicals, musicals, musicals. Isn't that interesting? Isn't it a the pass? Well, I don't know. I, I really just don't know. I, I was interviewed in, in San Francisco and... Well, I said quite frankly that perhaps a whole culture is changing. It's possible. You think so? A whole culture? Mm -hmm. My, that would be too bad. I'll be so interested in your telling me about it. Don't. You see, it's this way, Karen. I'm trying to keep from killing her. Why didn't you answer our telegrams? Answer me! I told you I was moving around a great deal. Don't tell me you didn't get them. You did. Well, what difference does it all make now? Karen is quite right. Oh, let bygones be bygones. Martha, remember when you were a little girl and I used to complain there were never any nice toilets backstage? Oh. Well, you should just see now. Why what did you refuse to come back here and testify for I us? I didn't refuse. I was on tour. That's a moral obligation. I just couldn't leave. How did you get out of the summons? Did you live in the toilets? I, I don't think it was nice to try to bring me back that way. I just don't think it was. But we'll talk about that another day. Oh, for goodness sakes, let's not go on in this way. Words, words, words. My, my trunk's at the station. Mrs. Mora, things have changed here. Yes, they've changed. Karen Wright and Martha Doby brought a suit for slander against a woman called Tilford. Oh, I meant to tell you, she's outside in a car. I saw her as I got out of my taxi. <laughs> She called to me. Imagine that. She's right up the road. Imagine that calling to me. A large part of Mrs. Tilford's defense was based on remarks made by Lily Mortar against her niece, Martha. And a greater part of the defense's case rested on the fact that Mrs. Mortar would not appear in court to explain or deny those remarks. Mrs. Mortar had a moral obligation to the theater. As you probably read in the newspapers, we lost the case. I, I didn't think of it that way, Martha. It, it couldn't have done any good for all of us to get mixed up in that unpleasant notoriety. But, but now that you've explained it, why, I, I do see it your way. And I'm sorry I didn't come back. But now that I'm here... I'm going to stand shoulder to shoulder with you. I know what you've gone through, but the body and heart do recover, you know. I'll be here, right along with you. We'll start... There's an eight o'clock train. Get on it. Martha... You've come back because you had no place else to go. There's nothing here for you. All my grown life, I've been something for you to pick dry. Now get out and don't come back. How can you talk to me like that? Because, because I hate you. I've always hated you. God will punish you for that. He's been doing all right. I'll, I'll wait upstairs until train time. You'll be sorry, Martha, for what you said to me. Because you have a good heart. I know you love me and are grateful to me. Every fool in the world thinks that about everybody else. Oh, look who's here. A couple of weeks late, aren't you? Oh, so it's you. Now, I, I call that loyal. A lot of men wouldn't still be here. You're a very lucky girl, Karen. Get out of here! Oh. Why did 
did she come back? She's broke. Well, we'll give her some money and get rid of her. Um, oh, now, Martha, stop it now. <sighs> she isn't worth all that. Oh. Get finished with her for good, huh? So, what did you do today? We stayed here. We started to go out. Oh, now, you I... promised me yesterday, both of you. Do you feel all right? Why did you do that? Do what? Draw away from me. Oh, I didn't draw away from you. What kind of talk is that? I, I was putting out a cigarette. Oh, look, we sit around here much longer. We'll all be bats. And so we're not going to sit around here. I sold my place this morning to Foster. You can't do that. You can't. We're getting married this week. I'll give both of you two days to pack and close the place. On Thursday, we'll be on a train. You can't hey, leave here. I won't have you do this. You, you must go to Foster right away and... Now, don't let's have any of that talk because it's all done and over. And last week, I wrote to Jake Sundstrom. You remember my, my old and good friend? I've told you about him so often. We roomed together at school and at college. I am not going to let you leave here. I am not going to let you... Well, Jake's fixed it for me. He found the right place. You know, it's, it's, it's farm country. It's mostly Swedes. And he says they need a doctor bad. And it's going to be tough going at first. We'll be out in the middle of nowhere. But we'll live cheap, and there'll be plenty for all oh, of us. Joe, Joe, I'm not going with you. I, I couldn't go with you. But I thank you from the bottom of my heart. You're coming with us. Oh. Do you think we'd leave you? I mean, we want you to come. It's going to be good. <sighs> kind of fun to start all over again. You don't want to go. No. I don't want to go. This was my place, where I was born, where I wanted to be. And you wanted to stay here, too. Well, to hell with all that. We can't stay. So we're going to a place where we can live and where I've got a good friend who understands and will help us. Now, don't talk about it anymore. Please, darling. Yes. Karen, Joe's right. But I can't go. It's better for all of us if I don't go. You're coming with us. It wouldn't be happy for us if you didn't. Later on, you'll leave if you want to, and then I won't say no, all right? All right. Uh, and I thank you. You'll both need warm coats and boots. <laughs> we'll stop in Boston for a day, buy things for you, huh? I'm going to make a good omelet now. <laughs> a very good one. You'll like Jake, and he'll like you. God, I've never seen his wife. God, the time we spent as kids talking about the women we were going to have or, or marry or something, and the places we were going to go together, and, and I came back here, I never saw him again. Yes, well, it was right for you to come back. You're a part of this place, and a good part. You'll be coming back someday. No. It isn't what I thought it was. My people... <laughs> my people aren't what I thought they were. I want no more of it. I've done this to you. I've taken away everything you want. And when we get there and find ourselves a place to live, we'll take a fishing trip for a honeymoon. It's beautiful country and... Everything we wanted. Everything we were gonna be. All gone. And we have to sneak away to some place that hasn't anything to do with please, us. Please, please, stop talking that way, huh? We've got a chance. But I think it's only a chance. And if we miss it, we're done for. And that means that we're going to start putting the whole business behind us now. What you've done, you've done, and that's that. What I've done? Uh, what, what's been done to you? You said it yesterday, too. What do you mean when you say what you've done? Tell me what you mean. Nothing. Nothing. I... I don't mean anything. Why do you think I do? Karen, there are a lot of people in this world who have bad trouble. We happen to be three of those people. We could sit around the rest of our lives and live on that trouble and we'd get to the place where we'd have nothing else because we wanted nothing else. Now, that's fun for some people, but it's not for me. I wanted to be a doctor because I don't like sick people. I'm, 
I'm not going to be a sick man, and I'm not going to let you grow sick either. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll be all right when we get out of here. I, I want a baby. <laughs> I want to have a baby. <laughs> well, wait a year. I huh? won't have enough money now. I don't want to wait a year. You always said you wanted children right away. What? Well, why have you changed? We... We can't go on like this. Everything I say is made to mean something else. What are you doing to me? What's the matter with you? Yes, every word has a new meaning. Child, love, lawyer, judge, friend, room, woman. That we can't move away from. A new place, a new room won't fix that for us. Sick, high, tragic people. That's what we'll be. No, no. we won't, darling. We must learn how to live and love again. We, we knew how to do it. It's only this bad time that has to be got over. We must go slow and take care, and it will pass quickly. People don't set a date for things to go right or wrong. It won't work. What won't work? The two of us, together. Stop talking like that. You'll believe it soon. Tell me. Tell me what you want to know. I don't know what you're talking about. Yes, you do. We've both known for a long time. Say it now, Joe. Ask it now. I have nothing to ask. After a while in the court, I stopped listening. Then I began to watch your face. It was the only nice thing I could think of doing. You were ashamed. And so was I. But you had trouble worse than that. You were sad at being ashamed. Ask it now, Joe. I have nothing to ask. Nothing. All right. It is. Was it ever? No. Martha and I never touched each other. It's all right, darling. I'm not mad. I, I am glad you asked oh me. Oh, my God. What's happened to me? Oh, I'm sorry, darling. I'm sorry. I didn't want to hurt you, and I, I didn't ever believe. No, of course you didn't, really. But after a while, you weren't sure. Maybe there was just a little truth. Don't be ashamed of what you felt. I've asked. You've answered that's all. Now let's go ahead now. I will... You believe me? You know I believe you. Maybe you do. But I'd never know whether you did. You don't get over things by just saying you do. I don't believe you could touch my arm without my wondering why you didn't kiss me. And I don't think you could kiss me without my wondering if you really wanted to. And I'd hate myself for all that. And then I'd hate you too. I don't want ruin. I don't like it. Oh, Joe. You know all that. I don't. I, I don't. What happens between people happens. And after a while, it doesn't much matter how it started. But there it is. I'm... Like everybody else, the way I always was. I, I can have the things that other people have. I can have you and children, and I can take care of them. And I can go to market and read a book, and people will talk to me. Only, I can't. I can't. And I don't know why. <laughs> go home, darling. We can't leave each other. We're not going to leave each other. You're tired. I'm tired. I, I didn't know what I was Don't asking. Don't be sorry. You're such a nice man. You say I helped you. Now, you help me now, huh? Help me, Karen. All right. Go away for a little while. Away from me and love and pity and all the things that mess people up. Go away by yourself. And so will I. 
please. Please do it that way. And after a while, I'll know, and you'll know. And then we'll see. Please, Joe. Well, there's nothing for me to know. A few weeks won't make any difference. Please. I don't want to go. Go now, darling. I'll be all right. I'll be coming back. Soon. I don't think so. Cooking always makes me feel better. I found some purple syllab for the table. Remember? They were the first things we planted here. And I made a small cake. You know what? I found a bottle of wine. We'll have a good dinner. Where's Joe? Gone. A patient? Will he be back in time for dinner? No. We'll wait dinner for him then. K Karen, what's the matter? He won't be back. You mean he won't be back anymore tonight? He won't be back at all. What happened? What happened, Karen? He thought we had been lovers. I don't believe you. I don't believe it. What kind of awful talk is that? I don't believe you. I don't believe all it. All right, all right. Didn't you tell him, for God's sake, didn't you tell him it wasn't true? Yes. He didn't believe you? I guess he believed Then what me. have you done? It's all wrong. It's crazy. I don't understand what you've done. You guessed that he believed you? There's no guessing about it. Why didn't you? Oh, God. Oh. What's happened to us? I don't know. I... I think I'll make a cup of tea and go to bed now. Whatever happened, go back to Joe. It's too much for you this Stop way. Stop talking about it. L let's pack and get out of here. Let's take the train in the morning. The train to where? I don't know. Some place. Any place. A job. Money. In a big place we could get something to do. They'd know about us. We've been in the headlines. We're very famous. Small town, then. They'd know more about us, I guess. We'll find a place to go. I don't think we will. Not really. It seems to me I'll be sitting the rest of my life wondering what happened. It's a bad night tonight. But we might as well get used to it. We'll all be like this. But it isn't a new sin that they tell us we've done. Other people aren't destroyed by it. They are the people who believe in it. Who want it. Who've, who've chosen it for themselves. That must be very different. We aren't like that. We don't love each other. We don't love each other. We've been very close to each other, of course. I've loved you like a friend. The way thousands of women feel about other women. Oh, I'm cold. You were a dear friend who was loved, that's all. Certainly there's nothing wrong with that. It's perfectly natural that I should be fond of you. Why? Well, we've known each other since we were 17, and... And I always Why thought... Why are you saying all this? Because I love you. Yes, of course. I love you too. But maybe... I love you that way. The way they said I loved you. I don't know. Listen to me. What? I have loved you the way they said. Martha, we're both so tired. Please, There's don't. There's always been something wrong. Always. As long as I can remember. But I never knew it until 
All this happened. Stop that crazy talk. You're afraid of hearing it. I'm more afraid I than you. I won't listen to you. You've got to know it. I can't keep it to myself any longer. I've got to tell you that... that I'm guilty. You are guilty of nothing. <sighs> I've been telling myself that since the night we heard the child say it. I lie in bed night after night praying it isn't true. But I know about it now. It's there. I, I don't know how. I don't know why. But I did love you. I do love you. Oh. I resented your marriage, maybe because I wanted you. Maybe I wanted you all these years. I couldn't call it by a name. But maybe it's been there ever since I first knew it's you. It's not the truth. Not a word of it. We never thought of each other that way. No, of course you didn't. But who says I didn't? I never felt that way about anybody but you. I never loved a man. I never knew why before. Maybe it's that. You are tired and sick. It's funny. It's all mixed up. That there's something in you and you don't do anything about it because you don't know it's there. And suddenly, a little girl gets bored and, and tells a lie. And there, that night, you see it for the first time. And you say to yourself, did she see it? Th did she sense it? What are you saying? You know it could have been any lie. She was looking for anything. Yes, but, but why this one? She found the lie with the ounce of truth. <laughs> I guess they always do. <laughs> I've ruined your life. And I've ruined my own. I swear I didn't know it. I swear I didn't mean it. Oh, I feel so goddamn sick and dirty. I can't stand it anymore. Oh, this isn't true. We don't have to remember it was ever said. Tomorrow we'll pick ourselves up. I don't we'll... want tomorrow. It's a bad word. Go and lie down, Martha. And in a few minutes, I'll make some tea and bring it to you. You'll feel better. Don't bring me any tea. Thank you. Good night, darling. doctor right away there isn't any use we got to do something Catherine. do something there is nothing to do oh it's awful <laughs> poor mother I, I don't know what we can do you think she's yes Don't be frightened. I can't. 
can't help it. How can I help it? <laughs> I'll never forget myself of the last words I said to her. But I was good to her, Karen. And you know, God will excuse me for that once. Suicide's a sin. Karen, we can't sit here. Sh shouldn't we call somebody? In a little while. Oh, she shouldn't have done it. She shouldn't have done it. <laughs> oh, it's because of all this awful business. Oh, she would have got a job and started all over again. She was just worried and sick. That and isn't the reason she did it. What? Oh, what difference does it make now? You're not crying. No. Oh, I wish I could have done something. But I, I haven't anything, you know. She was good to you. She was good to me. Oh, I, I know she was, Karen. And I was good to her, too. I did everything I could. <laughs> I haven't any place to go. I'll help you. <sighs> we must do something. I'm afraid it, it seems so queer. Next room. Don't be afraid. Oh, it's different for you. You're young. Uh, who is it? Uh, shall I answer? I, I think we better. Oh, oh, you, you can't come in here. Go away. What are you doing here? We've had trouble here. Let me come in, please. I say, you can't come in. You move away, please. Oh. Karen, I have something to say to you. You must hear me. Why have you come here? I had to come. I've been outside all day. I've been at the door. I've been phoning you. I tried to speak to Joe, but he won't talk to me. I've been waiting for you to come out. Then I thought I heard a shot or something, but... Get out of here. You bad, bad woman. You have no right in this house. You don't know what you've done. Karen, you must let me speak. I know it wasn't true. I found out it wasn't true. Mrs. Wells came to me today. I don't but... care what you know. If that's what you had to say, you've said it. Go away. I've got to tell you. I don't that. want to hear you. Mrs. Wells found a bracelet in Rosalie's room. The bracelet had been hidden for several months. She found out that Rosalie had taken the bracelet from another girl and that Mary... That Mary knew and used it to force Rosalie into saying that she had seen you and Miss Dobie together. That... I've talked to Mary. I've found out. Go away, Mrs. Tilford. Get out of here. I've talked to Judge Potter. He's made all the arrangements. There will be a public apology and an explanation. The damaged suit will be paid to you in full and... and any more that you will be kind enough to take from me. He's waiting to talk to you. We will do whatever you say. Martha is dead. Uh, so last night you found out you had done wrong to us. And now you have to right that wrong or you can't rest your head again. Well, don't rest it. I will not be your confessor. You told us that night you had to do what you did. Now you have to do this. A public apology and money paid and you can sleep and eat again. You and all those who always know how right they are. What's someone else's life to you? A way to show your own righteousness? And if you happen to be wrong, well, then you can always put it right some other day. I have a dead friend. Get out of here and be noble on the street. 
There is no relief for me, and there never will be again. I didn't come here for that. I swear to God, I did not. But what I am or why I came doesn't make any difference, doesn't matter. All that matters is you and... You now. Help me, Karen. <laughs> Help you. Let me do whatever I can do. Take whatever I can give. It won't bring me peace, and you don't think it will. I'm too old to recover. Too narrow to forgive myself. Yes, I believe you. You will have a hard time ahead. I will. Mary? I don't know. I don't know what to do. People say... I've read... But I can't believe or understand it. I... I, I, I don't know. She's yours. Blood of your blood. The result of you. Yes, it will be hard for a woman like you. She's harmed us both, but she did you the most harm. I guess I'm even sorry. You will try for yourself. Yes, I will. Come away now. You can't no, stay with... No, I don't want to go. You'll be all right. Yes. Goodbye now. I don't want to see you again. But you'll let me help you. You'll let me try. If it will make you feel better. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. Will you write to me sometime? If I ever have anything to say. You will have something to say. Goodbye, my dear child. Goodbye. In The Children's Hour by Lillian Hellman, Buffy Davis played Martha, Claire Holman was Karen, Miriam Margulies was Lily Mortar, and Margaret Robertson played Mrs. Tilford. Barbara Barnes was Mary, Dr. Joe Cardin was played by Peter Whitman, Anne-Marie Zola was Peggy, and Joanne McInnes was Rosalie. Evelyn was played by Kathy Sarah, and Frances Jeter was Agatha. The director was Claire Grove. <laughs>